So I hope we're gonna have a great uh, time together. All right. Okay. So this evening we are going to uh, give few things about the. Um, we're going to discuss something to do with uh, speaking for part two, speaking part two. And this one is going to give us a chance, okay, or give each one of you a chance to learn how to improve and how to uh, com uh, try to avoid the common mistakes in speaking part two. A lot of, your, a lot of us or a lot of the students are very concerned, okay, related to how they can improve um, answering speaking part two. So we're going to tackle some of the uh, mistakes and uh, probably we're going to see a video first, okay? So the topic here is to describe an occasion when you receive incorrect information. So we're going to watch a uh, video clip about uh, an answer, okay? So of course, we would like to hear also a few feedback from our guest student, and her name is uh, Zhang. And we will be discussing with you guys how you can actually improve your speaking part two, okay? And try not to commit the same mistakes again and again. Okay, so shall we uh, watch this video first? There's no sound. First destination, I reach out to my friend who will have been our destination before to get some tips and many questions. My friend explicitly told me a particular attractions. Uh, that was supposed a must visit, a must visit, and uh, I also asked her about uh, renting a car, and she introduced me to uh, her relative, and we contacted her. Uh, I I didn't ask her carefully about the price, and I rented that as a car. When I got there. I asked uh, him the total price, and she uh, he said a different price from the one uh, that my friend told me, and uh, not wanting to risk getting into the difficult uh, financial mess, I decided to double check his information. I told my friend and uh, asked her about the price. And she confirmed that the price was higher than the one she told me, uh, what she told me. And she uh, checked the wrong price and gave me another price. And after that experience, I... Lesson that uh, is important to verify information before taking any actions, and uh, it's essential to uh, verify information before you making any decisions. So uh, from uh, now, whenever I make any decisions, I uh, always check the information and. Also check multiple sources and make sure that I uh, want to uh, get a similar situation for that. Okay, so there you go. Um, yeah, I think there are some uh, concerns about the volume. Um, can you guys hear me clearly? Okay, so I think just the, the video that is a little bit uh, low in volume, but I hope you guys can hear us uh, clearly uh, when we talk to you. So let's talk about the um, probably the 
Some of you may not be able to hear very well the sound of the video, but we'll just go through uh, with the some of the good points uh, that um, this student has actually presented her uh, topic. So given the topic, describe an occasion when you receive incorrect information. So some of the good points that we noticed in her because she was able to present her story relevantly uh, to the topic, okay? And she had a clear sequence of events, okay? And eventually she is able to use some collocations. I'm sure you guys are familiar with some collocations uh, to have variations of vocabulary. It is important in IELTS, not only in speaking part two, but as we are focusing on speaking part two, collocations, even idiomatic expressions can be very, very helpful when it comes to variations of words, not only by just synonyms, okay? So aside from that, the most important part here is she is able to maximize her time by extending her answers, okay? Like she was able to make use of the two minutes. If I'm not mistaken, she uh, was able to talk more than two minutes. However, um, one of the things that she has to improve if you try to notice that her answer may have some hesitations and uh, chunking sounds. When we say hesitations, whenever you say, um, um, okay, it definitely affects your uh, fluency, okay? At the same time, when we say chunking sounds, it means that the linking sounds when you speak, so you don't have to speak like one word at a time, all right? So eventually, if you have that kind of uh, certain presentation, if you always speak that way, your, your, uh, your, how do you call this? Your speed will be highly affected, okay? So just imagine you're talking to a robot, okay? So in case that would happen, okay? So if you are the examiner, you wouldn't, you would, I don't know if you want to hear, okay, someone talking to you in a monotone, okay? Chunking sounds normally is a common problem I notice, okay, in most of the students' problems. So if this happens, of course, your pronunciation would be affected, okay? And uh, being natural, okay? You have to be natural when you are telling this story because actually, Part two is like telling a story, okay? Although you don't have to tell a story like in a fairy tale, okay? So you have to follow the sequence of your ideas or whatever, uh, what the topic, uh, what the topic card requires you to speak, all right? So your, your story should revolve, okay? Or should revolve around the topic. You can extend your answers uh, as you wish, okay? So solutions to the problems uh, related to what we have or whatever, uh, what we have here is avoid memorized answers, by the way. Um, some students are fond of memorizing answers and it will indeed uh, affect your score because the examiners can actually detect or they can definitely detect your a uh, way of answering. And why is it easily to be detected? Because of your intonation and the way you actually organize your ideas. Uh, one of the biggest concerns in IELTS uh, speaking part two is they cannot continue till the sec uh, two minutes, okay? And remember, you have to maximize or you have to really make use of your two minutes, okay? So answer, uh, when you answer, you can actually make up stories, right? Or we, we can say you can lie if you want, but the problem of lying or making up stories is that you will end up always thinking what's gonna be the next, uh, next thing that you're going to talk about, okay? So that's the problem with making up stories. But normally it is a, it is, no choice. Sometimes we have no choice but to just try your best to make up stories. In case that you are not familiar with the topic, then you have to uh, try understanding some of the question. Uh, top. I mean the question. Okay. So and in, I think 
when it comes to the um, topic, you are not going to just, uh, let's say, try not to pretend that you know the topic all the time. You can actually ask the examiner as well, okay? So you can understand fully the topic, okay? So Ms. Zhang here can also share her ideas, okay? So we have Ms. Hung Zhang, our beautiful student guest. Thanks, Ms. Myra. But uh, you covered almost everything that I, uh, I so was about to yeah, okay. find, find out. All right. You can add yes. on, Ms. Zhang. Okay. Um, so basically, what you said, um, uh, she used good collocations and she followed a timeline sequence. That's all everything I like about uh, her speak. However, I think that um, to add more intonation to her story, she can tell, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the reason why she trusts her friend so much and, you know, her feeling when she received the incorrect information from her friend's cousin. Right, because I think that at that point, maybe you feel betrayed because uh, it's the cousin of someone that you trust, uh, of your best friend. So maybe add more feeling into the story might make the story become, you know, uh, more believable. And um, I think it also add an interesting point for the examiner to, you know, to listen to as well. That's right. So based on the experience for sure of Ms. Ha Zhang during her test, I'm sure you guys should also, that's also one thing I want to point out when Ms. Zhang said, you put feelings, okay? Guys, this is a uh, speaking, um, IELTS speaking is not a test of your ability to speak of uh, the most difficult vocabulary words, okay? It's about a, a test of your ability to communicate, all right? So in this case, we can see some uh, information on some mistakes uh, that we can, most students commit, okay? And I'm sure some of you may have uh, tried taking the IELTS test and you may be asking like, why am I still, uh, why, am I, why am I still getting the same uh, low scores? Okay, maybe not too low, but the same scores. There is a possibility that there is something that mi is missing in your way of answering, okay? So we're going to talk about the common mistakes. Though I'll have, I, we are showing here, ah, okay. So the overview. So I'm sure you are already familiar about the overview of the IELTS speaking part two. So most of you maybe have taken IELTS courses or even some of you have already taken the real test. So you should be prepared. In IELTS, you have uh, to give a talk. That's why we, uh, we call it a uh, long turn, okay? So you're going to give a, uh, a two minute speech, though make sure that you're aware of your time limits, okay? So it's your chance to show your examiner how well you can talk for an extended period, okay? And that is the two minutes in there, all right? So again, you also have your one minute preparation. Uh, if, uh, if I'm not, uh, I think I forgot to mention that here. So you guys are aware that you will be given, any topic will, uh, will be given to you, whether you like it or not, okay? Whether you know it or not. So you have no choice, but you have to be uh, prepared as uh, whatever topics you will be given. So. Again, you have one minute to prepare and you have two minutes to talk about your topic, okay? So moving on to our next uh, slide. Okay, so what is the IELTS examiner looking for? I'm sure you are familiar with uh, these four criteria. So the fluency and coherence, lexical resource, it means your vocabulary, a uh, grammar and pronunciation. So in fluency and coherence, your talk should be coherent and well-structured, okay? Your talk should also be relevant to the given topic, not out of topic, okay? So lexical resource, you should use a wide range of language appropriately with some idiomatic languages, a language or collocations, like what we, uh, like me and Ms. Zhang earlier mentioned that uh, the speaker earlier or the candidate earlier has 
uh, she you were she was able to use uh, use the collocations pretty well. So eventually you have to have a wide range of vocabs, all right? Or lexis as we call that. Grammar, very important in, uh, in speaking, not even, uh, not even just in writing, okay? So in grammar, you should be using a wide range of grammatical structures with only very rare er uh, errors, okay? If you really want to get a good band score or like the best band score. So you have to be aware of your mis uh, of your grammar structures, common uh, common things that you have to be careful about in grammar is the tenses of verbs, uh, yeah, the tenses of verbs and also the subject verb agreement. Okay, I'm sure you are familiar with these two. So all you have to do is always remember the you have to understand okay the topic because somehow the topic is also your guide as to are you going to use a uh, past tense or present tense or in the future tense, okay? So you must know how to, uh, let's say, use the correct tenses as much as possible, all right? And then for the subject verb agreement, we also have the problems like, for instance, like, you know, you say it have or Hanoi have, all right? parents is, okay, people is. So these are very, very common mistakes. And uh, normally it's like uh, students are unaware, okay, or candidates are unaware of these uh, mistakes, okay? Although in the end, of course, the real, uh, the real thing is that you will be able to, or you, you will end up losing some points with your grammar here, okay? If you make those, um, uh, with those mistakes. Pronunciation, uh, of course, you should be easy to understand throughout, and you should use a variety of pronunciation features such as intonation, connected speech, that means to say the linking sounds. So you should not speak like, I am happy to talk about, okay? So imagine you, you speak that way. So your speed will be highly affected. So it will also affect your fluency in the end, all right? Okay, moving on. So these are some of the common mistakes, okay? One of the grievous mistakes uh, that you can make is not speaking. Uh, sorry, that's supposed to be two minutes, okay? Not three minutes. So what are some of the reasons not able to prepare the talk in the logical structure? shortness of cohesive devices. I'm sure you guys are familiar with some cohesive devices. It could be uh, some of the students that I noticed, they just uh, use very simple cohesive devices like and, uh, so, after that, furthermore, moreover. So you guys should learn also other uh, cohesive devices like um, in, uh, I would like to talk about a very uh, important thing that I cannot leave without, for example. And I would like to start off by saying, okay, then you start. So you don't just say, uh, today I would like to talk about an important thing that I cannot leave without. It is, okay, so notice uh, it is a, my mobile phone. My mobile phone is very important because so remember, you must try to have a connector, which basically can make your sentences sound more impressive also, okay? And then not utilizing your preparation for one minute time well, that means some students, they are actually not aware, but during the one minute preparation, they don't know basically what they're going to write, okay? Although it's necessary that you must take note of what, uh, what the requirement, okay, in your uh, speaking part two topic is. So you have to complete your talk in a short period of time. This is also one thing. Most, uh, or uh, not only uh, some, okay, there are some students who cannot go through uh, till the two minute talk, okay, and remember, the requirement is two minutes, all right? Although uh, sometimes the, the examiner would say you can talk, uh, you can now present your topic in one to two minutes, but eventually 
you still have to reach the two minutes, okay? Yes. The second, uh, we'll just have a very, very quick uh, idea here. Always remember that talking more is not the same as talking correctly. Many students do not have enough content to speak. Failure in brainstorming your ideas. So that means during the part, I mean, the um, one minute preparation, you don't have enough ideas probably. So that is also one thing. Not utilizing your preparation time well. I think we mentioned that earlier. Completed your talk in short duration of time, which is less than two minutes. Not organizing your talk in a logical manner. So you're just talk whatever you want. You just say whatever you want to say there. That could be a problem, okay? A common mistake as well. Next, the third one is memorizing your answers and reading your notes continuously. I also notice this a lot of my students do that. I always tell them, do not memorize your answers. Do not read your answers during the, the pre, uh, presentation. So in the end, they don't have uh, just imagine your reading and then eventually the sound of your, your intonation wouldn't be natural at all. So you have to be very, uh, you have to be aware of this situation, okay? Fail, uh, fail to follow the desired structure of sentences, okay? So meaning to say the grammar structure, absence of linking sentences properly, that is the absence of cohesive devices, okay? Linking sounds also can be the, the problem. We mentioned that earlier. Being nervous or underconfident. Some students, they are, they were, uh, they are actually eaten by their nervousness. Um, that means they, sometimes they have mental block, all right? And then the underconfident word here means like, yeah, you can understand. You have low self-esteem when it comes to organizing your ideas or maybe, you're not just so into this kind of, you're not used to this kind of uh, scenario, okay? Then diverted or not focused. A lot of times students have this problem. Uh, you know, when you started talking and then suddenly you uh, lose track of your ideas. So that can be another problem when it comes to speaking part two. The fourth one, is going off the topic and making illogical structures. Never practicing the topic before, uh, not utilizing the preparation time well. Again, it's always like that. Absence of linking properly structured sentences. So what is this about? So of course, it is understandable when your ideas are not relevant to the topic. Of course, what do you expect? The examiner will normally give you a lower score, okay? Make sure when you talk, it should be related to the topic. So even to the point of your extension of ideas, when you want to extend more, you make sure that it is still under the content of your speaking part two topic, okay? So that is part of going off topic and making logical structures. And the last one, overthinking while speaking and going silent. Many times it happens, uh, that it happened that the student actually, uh, you know, they keep to, um, thinking, what else are they going to uh, say? And this is uh, the reason, or this is also one of the thing about, uh, one of the things that you have to be careful when you are just making up stories, okay? Because uh, the tendency if you are making up stories, good if you are pretty, uh, pretty well diverse or well versed, when it comes to making up stories. But the problem if you're making up stories is that you may end up thinking, what else am I gonna say? What is the next thing that I'm going to say? So you will end up cram, uh, cramming during the, the test, okay? So remember, the two minutes is not that long, by the way, but still the tendency for the students to lose track about their ideas because they overthink while talking and going silent at the end of uh, in this situation, okay? So sometimes the topic may be too tricky or too complicated. So lack of gathering ideas at random of uh, random off the topic given, okay? So these are common uh, mistakes in speaking part two, although we will elaborate it more, okay? 
How about for Zhang? Can you share a little bit more about the? Uh, can you give a little idea about some mistakes that you can uh, share to our audiences here? I mean, it's very well covered. So I don't really know if I can point <laughs> out anything more <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Maybe I'll, anyways, I'll, I'll, guess, yeah. I'll participate more in the uh, later part. Okay, we very today. well. Yes. All right, thank you, Zhang. So let's move it. Let's move now to the uh, how to avoid the mistakes. All right. So generate ideas. So meaning to say, you have to uh, before your test, make sure to thoroughly acquaint yourself, analyzing and conceiving with different question prompts. So in the end, the only way to practice to know or to get familiar is practice, okay? And you always, um, I don't know, this is, a, this is a repeated question. Teacher, how can I improve? Teacher, how can I do this? How can I do that? And the teacher will always say, practice, 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 <laughs> okay? You can ask those who got band aid, like Zhang maybe, you can ask Zhang later, how she got band eight in speaking for sure she will tell you practice <laughs> all right but anyways yeah. before you take the test get from a be familiar of different topics okay um some students are well or uh, well knowledge okay they have they have so much ideas and everything they have known so many things because they are wide readers probably or they keep watching some videos, uh, some uh, documentaries, or even some uh, sample videos of IELTS. So eventually this can help you, okay? So you have to try your best to generate ideas. Do not just rely on uh, simple topics that you see on the internet. So go outside the concept of just, ah, okay, so I'll just wait until my test what if you don't know anything about your topic, okay? So that would be the hardest part there. Then just speaking with the flow about live and hypothetical examples, supporting your idea with linking device, okay? So try me, uh, this one, may, uh, it means to say the use of uh, linking words, all right? Or try to connect your ideas uh, in a very logical way, all right? So this is one thing. Follow a proper structure. When you learn, actually, um, when you learn in any courses in IELTS, your instructors or your teachers will always tell you to follow structures, okay? How you give an introduction, how you can have an opening sentence, or what are the best opening sentences that you can use. So make sure that your answers are uh, least, at least has some length. Do not just answer like, okay, describe uh, an information. I mean, a, uh, an important uh, information you receive, just for example. And then what is it? Like you just say, today I would like to talk about um, an email from a friend. Uh, this email is about uh, an invitation about a birthday party. We will go there next month and uh, we will go there next week. And uh, why, I, uh, why I want this letter or why I, uh, what I like about this, um, uh, how do you call that email? Because it is, an, uh, it is uh, an invitation from a good friend and we will have a good time. So notice that answer may not be wrong, but the way the answers are being given, they are not so, um, it doesn't need to be very complicated, all right? But at least the organization of ideas may not be, or may be, uh, is necessary, okay? So you have to make sure your answers are really uh, logical and use some uh, cohesive words or linking verb or words, okay? As much as you can and extend. Okay, extend your answers. Support your answers using question prompts. Uh, for example, you say, why I enjoy this uh, mail or email. So something like you can, uh, you can explain again, 
or maybe you can give a little supporting example. So something like that, okay? So try to boost your answers using conditional sentences also, okay? Moving on. Uh, okay, aside from those two, we have also practice your talk by self-recording. I'm sure a lot of you don't want to uh, hear your own voice, okay? Especially when you're recording your own voice. Some students, they never like their voice because they sound like, they always say, teacher, I sound like a minion or a chipmunk in my, uh, in my recording. It doesn't really matter, okay? What matters most is that when you record your voice, you listen to it and you, you have to identify what are the problems, okay? Maybe the, the speed is slow. Maybe you lack some vocabularies there. Maybe your organization of idea is, uh, ideas may not be very coherent, something like that. You yourself can tell your own mistakes, okay? Although maybe some needs someone else to tell that to them, but when you record your voice, at least you know what are some of your uh, mistakes, okay? And you can work it better. Stay calm and be focused. So how are you going to avoid mistakes by this? Of course, the interviewers aren't expecting you to be a brilliant orator or a speech, uh, uh, yeah, something like a speaker, it would be very effective if you talk normally. So like we always say, just be yourself during the test. And then there is nothing like familiar or unfamiliar or easy or tough, but with good eye contact with the interviewer and a decent smile on your face with a polite talk, you can conquer uh, any topic, okay? Please, Try to uh, try your best not to be so nervous. I'm sure there is tension during the test, but do not let your uh, feelings, okay? Your tense feelings affect your performance. It can really affect your performance or your score in the end, all right? And the eye contact here doesn't mean you have to stare, okay? Your examiner, just imagine you are the examiner and then someone stare at you for 15 minutes or 14 minutes, you will never like the idea, okay? So eye contact means just uh, show, uh, show the interest, okay? It shows the interest that you're talking to someone, all right? And then let's proceed to Okay, the next part there is we are going to, we have already, okay, questions and uh, here. How to brainstorm effectively for speaking part two in one minute, okay. So maybe some of you can give, I'll, I want your participation, not just keep listening on to me or to Ms. Zhang, okay? So I want you guys to also tell me your idea, okay? Maybe one or two uh, can share, okay? How to brainstorm effectively for speaking part two in one minute. Probably some of you may have a very uh, great idea there. Okay, who wants to share? Anyone can share. And Ms. Zhang and I will say, we agree. <laughs> All right, okay. We will just agree or disagree here or no, just kidding. We are also going to share our ideas about your questions here. So how to brainstorm effectively for speaking part two in one minute, uh, not one minute, okay? So we're, we're checking some uh, grammatical errors here. Okay, so yes. Anyone? Anyone wants to? Anyone wants to share their brilliant idea? There's one. one there's one. Okay. There's one. Okay. One student. Okay. What is your answer to this? Um, maybe I would think about the W H question, such as what, when, where, what, why, how, or something like that. And maybe I'll we'll try to stick uh, my answer to an actual experience that I had before in my life to better, mm. il to better illustrate it in a more mm. vivid manner. Right, okay, that's, that's really amazing, okay? So imagine uh, that, is the, that is one of the best thing that you can actually do. When you are going to be given the preparation time, so do not just stick to the topic there. You, you go out for, to the concept. Like I said earlier, you can get out from the concept alone 
add more information, keywords. You don't need to write full sentences, okay? So yes, any other? And then yes, of course, WH questions, experiences, put them into your, uh, put them into your ideas when you are given the one minute, okay? So do not look into the ceiling and think of what you're going to write. Yes, any other? One more, maybe we can ask, uh, we can let another one share, okay? His or her idea. It, it, it's, we're not only, uh, you're, you guys are not only, uh, how do you call this? You're not only listening here. I want you to participate, okay? So we can uh, have one more student probably to share his or her idea about this topic. How to brainstorm, yes. Anyone? Don't be shy. Remember, you should be confident. That's one of the best thing you have to you do have you have to do in the IELTS speaking test. Please do not make yourself so shy or don't be too shy. Okay, and it is not an excuse. Okay, you don't have to say, "I oh, teacher, I am an introvert." I always hear that word, teacher. I am an introvert, so I cannot. Uh, I, I am not very, I'm not very uh, confident. So if you're not going to be, if you're not confident, then I would suggest do not take the test because in the IELTS test, in any English or any speaking test, you need, we need your confidence. Okay. You have to be, you have to uh, believe in yourself. Yes. Anything else or anyone else can share probably. Is there anyone who can uh, give their brilliant comments or brilliant idea? So we had one earlier. One more, I think. At least you can share, okay? We are here to share ideas at the same time. Do we have anyone? Okay, one more, one more student who can share his or her idea, how to brainstorm effectively. Aside from what you have heard earlier, the WH question, you have to think about it. This one, All this right, one. one more. Ah, <laughs> Zang was this one, this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> two, two victims. Okay, we have two victims <laughs> here. Okay, yeah. Okay, the yeah. other one. Yep. Yes. Yep. Can, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Uh, yeah. None. So, okay. firstly, I agree with him that whenever we have a um, familiar topic, we can recall our mind and uh, like illustrate it like exactly what we have experienced. But True. whenever we meet a like unfamiliar topic, like the first, it's the first time we see it. So, I might choose to build up a whole story with the mm. keywords and write it down and a timeline too. And uh, I'm gonna uh, take note the the tenses I'm gonna use. So I'm not gonna use the wrong tense to lose the mark. True, okay, very well. So yes, that is one of the, those are uh, those things that you have heard from our two uh, brilliant uh, ideas, okay? To, uh, from our uh, students here. You can say that when you happen to get the topic, so do not freak out when you are going to see that the topic is actually unfamiliar to you. First things first, you have to think of the, uh, let's say, make sure that in one minute, you make use of your timeline, okay? So you can use, uh, you can use checklists to answer the WH questions there and uh, write your keywords. Plus at some point, maybe you're not familiar of the topic, but there are some words there that you may consider like, ah, okay, so this is what it is about, okay? But in case, just in case that you really couldn't and you don't really have an idea about the topic, please just try to read the prompts, okay? Because most, most likely there are four prompts there for sure you are aware of those prompts. You may, uh, you may have uh, an idea, okay, about those prompts. But um, honestly, guys, the topics in part two are not really that difficult. It's just that 
probably some of you or some of the students may not just aware or may not have that much idea. It's not that you don't understand the topic. It's just you don't have much idea about the topic. And then like uh, one of our uh, Ngan mentioned earlier, think of your experience and even the other one mentioned that. Think of your own experience that is relevant to the topic and you take notes, okay? So you write also the tenses. That is also good, okay? So you should understand the tenses needed in your topic, okay? Thank you for the sharing. The second question is, we have, I think, four, if I'm not mistaken. How can answers be extended effectively in speaking part two of the IELTS test? Okay, so probably we can ask Ms. Zhang about this. Can you share to us your experience, Miss? Right, so usually when I try to extend uh, the answer, I usually add you know, the background information or what I usually call is the event when that happened. So let me take, for example, maybe um, we have a topic about describing an old interesting person that you mm. met, right? Usually we don't really meet a lot of old and interesting person. So uh, what I usually do is that I made up the event when I meet that person. And I also made up the part that that person is old, but keep the interesting part to like to be true. Like we lie about those two other things, but keep one thing to be the truth so that we don't really lose track when the examiner asks a follow up question. Right. So, yes, I usually add the background information uh, like. Maybe I meet that old person at a uh, party, a, a neighborhood, mm -hmm. a party in the neighborhood where we welcome that person. Uh, he just, maybe he just moved in and mm -hmm. we trying to organize a party to welcome that person. And then I got to meet that person and then got to chat with him during the preparation for the party. And then when the party happened, uh, yes. So I try to extend in that way. And I also try to think you know, in a sequence, like mm -hmm. the period before that, uh, that event happened, during that event, and if I still have time left, I'll talk about what happened after that event. Mm -hmm. So that's how okay. I extend information. That's right. Okay. So guys, um, do not limit yourselves, by the way, with just the four questions there. Okay. Because some of the, some students that I noticed, they just rely on what the requirement of the topic is. So you have to extend your ideas. Eventually, your examiner, by the way, will stop you with uh, after two minutes, okay? But somehow, if, you, if your examiner hasn't stopped you, that means you still have the time. So make most of that, maximize it. And then eventually add more explanations like what uh, Zhang, Ms. Zhang said that, Try to give other uh, information, additional information, what happened after the, uh, the situation, all right? So at least you have the, the timeline, okay, the sequence of events. So try to figure out like, okay, what happened before that, what happened at the moment of the situation, then what happened after the situation or after the event, something like that. So it will extend your answers. Not that you will speak slowly to extend your time, okay? Because yeah. I noticed this in some students, they tend to speak quite slow, uh, slowly. I don't know why, but I said, keep going. And then they said, um, I want to uh, tell you about, so I don't know if they're trying to do it intentionally, or maybe that's really how they talk, but when I talk, when I ask them in part one, they're okay. But in part two, they tend to extend by uh, trying to slow down. But please don't uh, make your uh, speed really slow, okay? So just keep talking and add more information can be in the, let's say sometimes there is a tendency, uh, there is a possibility that you can add some explanations for the future, okay? Like probably you would say, and probably in the future, we will still have other events in the neighborhood. So which I hope that we can, uh, we can see each other again, this uh, person, or I can see again this uh, 
person that I have just met, okay? This old person that I have just met. So at least, okay? Extension of ideas, okay? Next question. It is always necessary to use advanced vocabulary in this part. And if it is, how can we strike a balance between it? Okay, so advanced vocabulary. So what do you mean by advanced vocabulary? Anyone can tell us what is advanced vocabulary? Yes. Anyone can share their idea. What is advanced vocabulary? This is actually the fear of the students, advanced vocabulary. Okay, so, well, uh, if we're saying advanced vocabulary, that means to say really difficult vocabulary. Are you telling us that, uh, should we really learn really difficult vocabulary? So anyone else uh, who can share us, what do you think about advanced vocabulary? What is in your mind when you, here or when you see the word advanced vocabulary. Okay, there's one student. Okay, another victim. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. yes. Hello, teacher. Hello, Zhuang, right? Am I saying your name right? Yes, right. Oh, it's my, name. my Vietnamese is getting better. <laughs> All right. Okay, yes. I think advanced vocabulary is a uh, not normal vocabulary. It's not normal. Be... Oh my goodness. So it is an abnormal vocabulary. Okay, yeah. not normal. Not the use, uh, not the common, maybe. That's what you want to say. Yes. It yes. tends to be academic or professional. Mm. And we can combine a lot of words like collocation or paraphrases to be a yes. vocabulary. It's my okay. idea. True, that's actually right, okay? Thank you, Zoom, for sharing. Yes, when you say advanced vocabulary, it's not totally that it is extremely difficult, but advanced vocabulary is like not the common vocabs that we use, and one of which is the use of your collocations. Uh, you know, the noun phrases, you have to learn also how to use your, uh, how do you call that, idiomatic expressions, but try not also to just rely on collocations and idiomatic expressions. You may consider paraphrasing some of your words, okay, into the, let's say, synonymous terms, okay? We call that the, uh, let's say, it's not necessarily to be advanced or to totally very difficult. At least it should be something to do with uh, variations of words, okay? Some may be, uh, let's say we, we call it not, uh, not the very common words that we use. And that is when, that's the reason why you always hear, uh, let's say in band seven, band eight, band nine, when it comes to uh, vocabulary, okay? You can always see there that try uh, in the criteria of uh, lexical resource, the criterion for lexical resource, they always add on the use of collocations or idiomatic expressions because those vocabulary words are not commonly used in regular conversation. So if you want to use, uh, if you want to improve your score, then take advantage of learning some collocations and idiomatic expressions, even paraphrased words, okay? However, there is a tendency that sometimes you may lose track of the vocabulary. You don't, you have it in your mind, but you don't exactly know what word are you going to say, or maybe the word is in your mind, but you cannot really express it, but you know how to describe it. In fact, that would be a great help, okay? You may not say the exact word, but you can describe the word to the examiner, okay? because the examiner can already identify, ah, okay, that's what he meant, but you don't lose points for that. In fact, that is what your examiner wants to hear. If you are already having a hard time saying the vocabulary, you can actually describe the vocabulary, okay, that you want to say. And still, you are a you're able to answer the questions, you are able to present your ideas, of your part two in that situation, okay? All right, you can, you can balance it by using 
uh, let's say, the idea about describing the words or the word, but try your best, okay? The, the thing is, try your best to really remember the words. But if it's really difficult, take note, you can describe the word, okay? So at least you are not losing points there, all right? Next is how to maintain fluency for long speech in part two. Okay, so when we talk about fluency, one of the uh, one of the matters there, one of the matters there, uh, the element of fluency is your speed, your uh, of course your connection of ideas. All right, and then at the same time your uh, your knowledge. Okay, about the about your topic. So how are we going to maintain the fluency? So again, I think we, we mentioned this earlier that you try your best to take note on the, uh, how do you call that, the, the key words, okay? And then add some or explain a little bit more of your ideas uh, as long as they are definitely very coherent to the topic. Just keep going. Just keep uh, talking, okay, until you reach the two minutes or your examiner will stop you. It doesn't matter if the examiner stops you, okay, so don't feel bad about it. In fact, your examiner wants to hear, uh, wants that idea that you kept, uh, you keep actually talking while, uh, while uh, the two minutes is already finished. It's all right, okay. So eventually for the fluency for long speech, you should try your best not to lose track of the topic, okay? Make sure you add on information like the events in the future probably. So just like what Ms. Zhang earlier mentioned to you guys that uh, you should try to add more ideas, okay, from the past maybe than what happened in that particular uh, information or that particular scenario, then add more explanation about it for the future or what happens after the event, okay? Just try to remember this kind of structure, the sequence of events, okay? The timeline as much as you can, all right? And you can really lengthen your, uh, your speeches there, okay? And there's one more, I think. How can grammar, all right, be controlled while speaking in the IELTS test? Okay, let's try to hear from Izam. How can you, uh, what can be your idea about this? How can grammar be controlled while speaking in the IELTS test? At least this one you can learn from, uh, from our guest student who took the test and got band A, okay? Tell us your experience about this. Right, so grammar is like a, a very difficult thing to control. Um, we have like one previous student where she said that, yes, uh, she note down the kind of verb that she is going to use and she note down the kind of tense that she is going to follow. So we can use that one. And while we speak, we should place ourselves in the date or the, the, the time when the event happened. So usually for grammar errors, usually students, they use um, the present tense when they talk about story that happened in the past. So an, a good way to avoid that is when you tell the story, you re, when you recall the story, you think back how that happened and you place yourself in the past so that you don't use present tense for things that happened in the past. And a way that we can avoid grammar error is by learning collocation. Usually students, they make mistake with preposition or articles like a lot. And they are very simple, uh, like an essential part of a sentence. So maybe learning collocation can also help you avoid that mistake. So that's all that I can contribute. <laughs> Okay. Yes, that's good enough. Okay, so I guess you you fully understand what Zhang mentioned earlier. So what we, I, I totally agree to that particular idea because you guys should understand what the tenses of the verbs that you see, because this is the common problem in IELTS speaking part two, the tenses of the verbs, okay? Commonly, the, the students uh, tend 
to forget what uh, they they know the answer. It's just that when they apply their answer, they they forget that what is the exact tense here. So eventually, you have to keep it in your mind that you have to really follow the structure of the I mean the the requirement. Okay. When you read the topic, honestly, guys, it wouldn't be that difficult because you can see your topic during the two minutes. So you will always be reminded that ah, I'm going to talk about something in the past. Okay. So always try to remember, okay, that the topic is at whatever your topic be and the requirement there. So always stick to what the requirement uh, asks you to talk about, okay? So common problem also, uh, aside from the tenses, is also when it comes to the, uh, let's say, subject verb agreement, okay? These are very simple mistakes, but um, still can affect the grammar structure. But how to control it? You have to be mindful of your own uh, answers, okay? Because you, uh, this is what I always tell to the students, listen while you're talking. Because when you listen to yourself while talking, you know that you make a mistake and then you can recover by correcting yourself, okay? Not to the point that you will just go, go on and talk and not, not even correcting yourself at the end. So listen and then try, listen to yourself while talking, okay? Focus. That's why we mentioned that earlier. We need focus, okay? Because when you present your topic, you have to focus on a lot of things. Okay? The four criteria, your fluency, your grammar, your vocabulary, and then your pronunciation, all right? So for the grammar, make sure that you understand fully the topic and the required grammar structure that you need there. So you won't be... Uh, lost, okay, when you present your answers, okay? That is the only way you can control. And uh, you have to understand what the topic is about and uh, how can you organize it using what the uh, question is about. Because sometimes there are questions, there are topics that even has a mixed control, a mixed, um, how do you call that? A mixed of uh, past, present, and even future, okay? So when you look into your topic, make sure you understand what are the grammar structures required in your questions, okay? So that can happen. And just uh, make sure that you understand the, the, the need of the, what grammar do you need to, uh, I mean, what tenses are you going to use for this particular question in your topic, okay? Yes. And uh, let's proceed now to uh, one of our topics that we're going to practice, okay? So moving to our next activity here, we have... Okay, so eventually we are going to uh, have a bit of a practice, okay? So, and then we are going to hear from Ms. Zhang to uh, take part, okay, in this particular topic. So, we're going to use a topic about, okay, describe an occasion when you receive, okay, where, where was that? Okay, describe an occasion, uh, I think. All right, sorry for the little interruption. Okay, so this is the topic that we're going to have a practice. So at least we can take part, some of you may take, will be able to take part, okay? We cannot accommodate all of you guys, but we can only accommodate two or three students later, but we can share or we can actually have Ms. Zhang to answer this topic first as an example. And then maybe we can ask uh, two students or three students to share, okay? Or to, to take part, okay? So describe a time when someone gave you something that you really wanted, okay? Zhang, you now have a minute to prepare. Okay. Zhang is now tensed. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Very tensed. <laughs> she, was, she was caught on 
<laughs> caught on the act. <laughs> but anyway, that's better. You guys can uh, can be, uh, you know, because you don't know exactly what topic will be given to you. Okay, Zam. Right. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. So now you have your two minutes. Okay, everyone, you can you can actually take note on how Zam can present her ideas uh, idea on this. Okay, or her brilliant ideas on this. Okay, Zam, your two minutes starts now. Okay. So um, last year, I really wanted to get an iPad Mini Six because uh, it was newly released. And I find that the model really fit what I wanted. Uh, it's very portable and it's very cute, basically. So in order to get my hand on the iPad, because I didn't really have the money to buy it. So I really have to uh, make my parents buy it for me, but in a very, very passive way, not really direct. So I talked about wanting an iPad like for months before my birthday comes up. Uh, I talk about it during dinner. I talk about it even during our small conversation whenever I can. Whenever we have family activities, I keep talking about how the iPad was so fit for me and how cute it is. So eventually I got what I wanted. Um, on my birthday, I got it as a gift from my mom and she handed, me, handed it to me in a very um, luxurious way. Um, she packed it up uh, in uh, my favorite color in purple packaging, uh, gave it to me, I, I opened it up and I wasn't really surprised because I already know that she's going to that she was going to give me the iPad because um, she asked me about what kind of model that I wanted and you know what kind of color I wanted and uh, all the details, the specification of the iPad. And after getting that item, I use it for a lot of um, use. I use it for a lot of activity at school as well as for my work. Um, you, for school, I usually use it for taking down notes, uh, usually use it for... Okay, uh, so thank you so much, Zhang. That is already uh, two minutes. Okay, so right. there you go. Yes. So notice what or how uh, Ms. Zhang actually organized her idea. So I need one volunteer to give his or her uh, observation about uh, Ms. Zhang's uh answer okay or way of answering the pre uh, this particular topic okay anyone can share so we just need one okay to to give us uh his or her observation about mizang's uh, presentation earlier did she uh did she uh uh, ab uh were she able to uh do all the things that we have discussed earlier, maybe you could have, uh, you can also tell some, uh, maybe she made some mistakes there. If you think that she made a mistake, you can also tell that, okay? So we are open into this uh, for the feedback, yes? Anyone can share their uh, observation to Ms. Zhang's uh, presentation? So who wants to volunteer? So we need volunteer because there are a lot of you here, all right? We cannot call each one of you here, okay. So who wants to volunteer to give his or her short feedback about a brief feedback about Ms. Zhang's presentation about this topic? A, do we have a uh, someone who is a brave enough? Okay, so just raise your hand if you want to share your observation. 
So no, no right and wrong answers, okay? Just an observation, a very open feedback about the presentation of Ms. Zhang. Did she, uh, did she uh, use collocations? Did she, was she able to organize? And were she able to use a structured answer? Uh, what about her pronunciation? How about her con uh, connectives? What did she What did she use? So I want to hear from you guys. So at least you are not just going to listen there and then uh, observe, okay? You are also a participant in this uh, workshop, okay? So anyone, just one, uh, I need one volunteer to give her or his observation. Yes. Because after this, I think we can have one uh, student maybe to uh, do the presentation, one or two, so we can make uh, also feedback and potential score. Okay, anyone? Don't be, don't be shy. My goodness. All right. There's one. A uh, two. Two, two. Oh, okay. So we will take the two. Okay, we will respect their observations. Yes? Let's take the first one. Who is the first one? Who wants to be the first? Nia? Oh, Nia. Oh, three. Uh, uh, there are three of you guys, but our time is very limited. So I can only accommodate two for now. Okay? Yes. Uh, next time, or maybe uh, when, you in, when you are going to join courses in IELTS uh, here in GLN, you can ask as many questions as you want. <laughs> okay. All right. So one, uh, Nia, who is Nia? Uh, do we have Nia here? Yeah. Uh, yes, I am here. Okay. Yes, Nia. Uh, uh, from, what I, from what I could observe, I, feel, I felt like her speech went on for a bit too long. She had all of the points, all mm. of the different details that was required of her, but the speech, but the length of the speech ended up of not fitting into the required mm. time span of two minutes. Mm. And personally, I feel like she could have spoken more about why mm. the specific iPad, the specific model of the iPad was fit for her. Maybe, mm. maybe it came with, with the stylus, which made it easier to write or to draw, or okay. maybe, or maybe it had a bigger screen, perhaps. She didn't so really the touch specifications, much on that. yeah. She could yes. have elaborated the specifications. Okay, that's a great observation there. Yeah, because when uh, when it was uh, when Zhang was talking about the specifications, she was just she cut it short. Okay, and then eventually, of course, if you are going to talk about the the thing, all right, the the. It's like whatever thing it is, you can have given a, a short explanation of what this thing about or what is the, yeah, like uh, what, what we can see or what we can, uh, what we can actually, uh, yeah, the, we call it specifications, okay, in, in short. So yes, that could be one observation, great observation there. So in addition to the idea about what the iPad is about, okay, so or what the thing is about. So the second, uh, thank you so much, Nia, for sharing. And what about the second person? So we can have, what's the name there? Bing Ang? Bing Ang? Bing Ang? Uh, yeah. Uh, Viet Ang. Yeah, I think. Uh, Viet Ang. Um, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, so I saw Olaf, actually. <laughs> All right. Okay. You like Olaf? Uh, yeah, so in my humble opinion, I think that she has performed pretty well because I love her intonation. Uh, it mm. seems like a fair... That's a strong word. Yeah. I love her intonation. You okay? Yeah, and I think that uh, she has covered most of the things we need to talk about when it comes to this topic. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it would be tough for her to prepare the whole whole things that she has pre 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 presented in just one minute. So I think it's a great answer. Mm, okay, very well. Thank you so much, Viet Ang. Okay, so based on uh, Zhang's, uh, based on Zhang's uh, performance, I, in fact, she was able to cover all the information there at to the point that I stopped her. And although she has 
fulfill a lot of things that she wants to say about what happened after, okay, when she received, or why, uh, how, uh, the time that she received it, and uh, the things that she actually used um, the iPad for, and how did she felt about, how did she feel about the uh, receiving that such a uh, uh, great uh, gift from her, from her mother. So eventually she was able to cover all the information, uh, all the points that you see here. The only thing, uh, if you notice, she tried to add on explanations or add on some events before, okay, before she received the before she received the uh, the gift, she was trying to give us an idea what happened before that, okay, which is also a great idea because it can already extend day uh, the time, okay. So, like I said, you must know the you must actually be aware of how you can um, you know the timeline. So you really have to try your best to follow a timeline when you are going to present your uh, your topic, okay? So who gave it to you? Do not directly say, I would like to talk about an iPad that I received uh, from my mother. It was, uh, it was a very beautiful iPad and I received it in my birthday. So remember, you are going to tell a story, okay? In here, you are telling a story. So what happened before uh, the re uh, before you receive the thing, then eventually you give every single detail. You don't need to explain really, really far or really, really uh, long for each topic. You just need to give uh, details, okay, direct to the point, though you can give some examples probably or supporting information to each of the uh, to each of the points here, okay? So that is how you can maximize your time, okay? And never forget the grammar structure, okay? So who gave it to you? What was the thing? When did you receive? Why you needed it? How did you feel? They are all in the past. And notice that she was able to present it thoroughly, okay? She, she didn't miss the idea of, uh, let's say, using the past tenses, although, a slight uh, problem when it comes to the pronunciation, but it it wasn't a very uh, it didn't really affect her communication pretty well. You notice that she stuttered a little, and she also was a bit hesitant in some uh, points there. But still, she was able to recover. Okay, so eventually that performance, due to slight uh, hesitations and. Uh, stuttering during the uh, presentation probably so that can still we can actually give that as a band eight still okay band eight band 8.5 more or less okay all right so all right thank you for the observation so we can actually give a chance uh we still have five minutes here but i think we can only need one okay so one present uh one person to uh, work on this topic, okay, as, as, a, as a kind of practice. And we need some kind of a volunteer here. So we will just take the third person who raised uh, his or her uh, hand uh, for giving observation. Who was that third person? Uh, no, 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 I mean, there were three of them, right? That. Uh, who was that third person who raised uh, his or her hand uh, during the observation? Ngan? Uh, Ngan. I don't know if there are so many Ngans here, but yeah. Who is, uh, is Ngan? Uh, the one, who, uh, there were three of you earlier who raised your hands for, who raised your hands for observation. So I need the third person, Ngan. Uh, I don't know what's the full name. Kangan, ah, Kangan. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, okay. it's pretty noisy here, so. Oh, okay. But uh, will you be willing to do the practice? Okay. <laughs> Hello, Ngan. Can you? Okay. Or maybe we will. Okay, because there, there are few. There are so many people around you there. I guess. 
Okay. But are you willing, Nan, to do the practice? Yes, hello, Nan. Can you hear me? And she is connecting to the audio. Uh, okay, so to make the most of our time, we just need one uh, another student probably. So who wants to who wants to take part? Just for one student for now, okay? Because our time is pretty limited. So yes, we can ask someone else probably to volunteer who is willing. Um, there's one. Uh, this one, okay. Yes. yes. Okay, this one. Who is? Oh, Vietang. Okay, Vietang. So we will take uh, Vietang this time. Okay, Vietang. So um, I would like to give you one minute to prepare and uh, two minutes to talk about the topic after, okay? So your one minute preparation starts now. So Ms. Zhang will also share her uh, observation about Vietnam this time after. <laughs> right. It's like he gave an observation to you and he will give an observation. <laughs> <laughs> I also but wanted to add, um, Yeah, yeah. I also want to add on to what Nia, uh, he, uh, what he observed. Mm. So yeah. Uh, he has great observation. I should have expanded more on specification, mm -hmm. but um, I dropped myself into a corner when I mentioned specification because I didn't actually have enough vocabulary for that part. True. That's why I evaded, like I avoided mm -hmm. it. And then I moved on to like uh, how I used it. True. So yeah, a tip is that it, don't drive yourself into a corner and try explaining something that you okay. don't have the vocab for. Yes, Vietnam, yes. that's already one minute. And uh, before you start off, and yes, I would like to say, in case you guys couldn't think of any vocabulary, so please do not stay uh, and then do not get stuck there, okay? You have to move on. You, remember, your two minutes is uh, ongoing So during the test. So you have to try your best to really answer all the prompts here before your two minutes will fi will be finished, okay? So yes, we will listen to uh, Viet Ang. This time your two minutes Viet Ang starts now. Uh, if my memory serves me right, it was about uh, three years ago, which means that I was in grade nine in secondary school at the time that I was in a desperate need of my school school, uh, my school school, I mean my school scholarship, uh, yeah, so at that time, I was really near the cutoff point, uh, just in a subject by all by by all biology that I uh, lack some mark, and then I needed to ask my biology teacher to give me a bonus mark so that I could be able to full fulfill the requirements of the scholar of the scholarship. Uh, at first, I thought that I had been the teacher's pet so far, so it turns out to be a piece of cake. However, when I asked her to give me that bonus mark, uh, like she refused my proposal and her attitude at the time uh, was a little bit offhand to me, uh, which up upset me the most. And then uh, the experience turned out to be a real nightmare to me. I needed to conduct a research paper on biotechnology biotechnology in order to gain some more mark and I was required to burn the midnight oil at the time and the, the research was a process of trial and error uh, of trial and error for me and then eventually I managed to persuade my teacher to give me more mark and I felt jubilant over this experience I was on cloud nine when I received the news that uh, he gave uh, she gave me the mark and yeah, in, con in conclusion, I just want to say that uh, there's a quote that I hold dear to my heart, which is when there's a will, there's a way. So if we find a way to get the things we want, then there will be some uh, somebody there to give you the thing that you're in, uh, that you're in, in need of. Uh, yeah, so if I were in such a situation again, I would definitely go to any, uh, go to any lengths in order to gain the okay. things I want. Thank you so much, Viet Ang. That's already two minutes. Okay, so we'll give you our feedback. 
So we'll start off with Zhang first. What would be, uh, what could be your uh, observation on Vietang's performance? Right. So I noticed that he used a lot of collocation and mm -hmm. a lot of idioms, a lot. And um, I'm not saying that using idiom is not good, but some of the idioms they should be, you know, yeah, maybe you should look when that idiom was used the most. So you use burn the midnight oil, it dated back to 16, to this, to 1060 in 600. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, yes. Like it did this back very, very long ago, and using mm -hmm. it in this setting is not very, very. fitting. So yeah. At this point, you will lose mark for using that idiom rather than getting mark because you have to use, I understand that uh, you try to use advanced vocabulary, but you really have to use it in an appropriate way. Like, uh, in a, it really has to fit uh, the setting that you're trying to deliver. And one more thing that I can note is that you're talking uh, I understand that you're trying to speak fluently by keeping the sentence together and trying not to hesitate or stop, but it really make your uh, speech unnatural in a way mm. because it's not like you're telling a story anymore. Usually when you talk to your friend and you tell the story, you're like, um, and what is it that I forgot? Uh, what is it that I was trying to say? You, you really have those kind of moments that give you... The, the natural factor when you try to tell a story. So to really sell that as a story, I think you should make it more natural. In a way, you should maybe slow down on some part. You shouldn't keep it going like this. Maybe some part fast, some part slower, and then some part faster. Because some part that uh, you're trying to think back of the idea of the information. So you say it in a slower speed something like that yes so it's mm. speed. and then when you remember uh the mo the, the the memory is more vivid then you just you tell the story in a faster pace mm. so yeah try to make it more natural and really research uh the idioms that you used mm. that's all that i can contribute <laughs> okay so all right thank you so yes i think uh zhang mentioned several uh things that i wanted also to share but more or less, I would say that, first of all, I would like to say that, okay, that's nice because you were able to uh, reach two minutes, okay? You were able to use up your two minutes there. But um, uh, one great observation that me and Zhang would agree is the unnatural uh, way of presenting your, uh, a natural way of presenting your uh, information or your uh, your story. Um, in fact, uh, when you when you mentioned uh, at the last part, like in conclusion, it's like you are doing a writing test rather than a speaking test. Okay. So remember, guys, you don't need really to say uh, you you are not telling a you're not actually giving information here. You are telling or you are giving a you are presenting your experience. Okay. So just like what Zhang said, that if you're telling story to your friend, you will never say, uh, if my memory serves me right. So I'm not against those things, okay? I'm not against you using those uh, phrases, but honestly, it turned, it turned out like you're memorizing your answers, okay? So although the pronunciation, your, your strength basically is your uh, partly, the organization of ideas there or was there, but um, the attack, okay, the attack of your, the approach of your answer is not at all very uh, natural. It's like you are trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. And then making use of so many idiomatic expressions may not be very helpful in the end, okay? You can use idioms, guys, but not to the point you have yet, yeah, like what uh, Zhang mentioned, you have to put the usage of your idioms into the right uh, time uh, timeline because some of the vocabulary used here, like yes, uh, some of the uh, vocabularies that you use were not necessary anymore, okay? You can use maybe paraphrase some words 
into like synonymous terms, okay, rather than making use of idiomatic expressions the, uh, as, uh, as you, uh, you wanted to make your vocabulary really difficult. And then the, um, the words like biology, okay, biology. So the, the linking sounds there. So you also have to uh, be careful about that. And uh, I, I, I hear, a, I don't know if you, you try to, uh, uh, because when you, you, when you shared your ideas, it's like there's no pause. So you have to breathe, you have to pause too, okay? You should know when the right pausing is, all right? And that is actually the, the, main, uh, the main reason why you have to try to be more natural because if you are not, uh, if you're not answering in a natural way or in, a, in just a, in a natural way, you ended up like, okay. So there's no clear intonation at all, okay? Or the intonation is highly affected at that point, okay? So to give you, uh, of course, um, that would be um, the answer itself is really good. The only thing is the, the approach, okay, of the answer. So when we talk about your fluency and coherence, so I'll give you a potential score for this, okay, Viet Ang. So for fluency and coherence, that particular uh, performance can be somewhere fluctuating between uh, 7 to 7.5. Lexical resource can be somewhere at the seven. I can only give you seven because there's so much, uh, let's say, idiomatic expressions which are not also necessary, okay, during the, in, in your performance. Pronunciation, more or less, I can say 7.5 to eight probably. And then for your grammar, more or less, you can also have about uh, seven, 7.5. So uh, there were a few words, a few grammatical mistakes there, but this doesn't really affect much of your performance as a, for your communication. So your overall or more or less, you are in the structures of about 7.5 average, okay? Or 7, 7.5 average, fluctuating. So I'm sure uh, you can still improve that and then we can still the only thing is I think you just need to improve more on the way to approach in a more natural way, okay? So I'm sure it can be improved still, okay? All right, so for Zhang, how much do you think you can give to, uh, to Viet Ang? I think around what you gave him, around seven, right? Seven. Uh, because he really, he, he really delivered it. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I understand, like from start to finish, I understand his story. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's not really natural. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, the only thing is not so natural. That's, yes. the, that's the thing why it pulled down to a bit of the, you could have reached eight, but the problem is the a natural approach may not be a very good idea. Okay, it's like memorizing your answers in the end, right? So anyway, uh, yes, that's all we can have. Uh, we can uh, share to you guys. And of course, we are so glad that you joined. I hope you gained some knowledge and uh, at least now you are aware of what are the things you need to uh, do to make your speaking part to more effective, more uh, relevant, okay? And how you can make use of your two minutes and your one minute preparation and so on. So thank you guys. And we hope to see you again in our next uh, online uh, online course coaching. Okay. So Ms. Ang, what's your uh, closing remarks there? Closing um, your message. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe like uh, when you speak, uh, try to imagine an examiner as your friend. Yes. That's it. To keep it natural because they get stressed like okay. talking to their parents or something <laughs> yes that's right be friendly all right so don't also feel i uh, don't feel like your examiners are your enemies during the test okay so they are make an atmosphere between you and exam your examiner during the test also a good atmosphere so and just relax that's the very thing just relax Go with the flow or go with your uh, go with your answers naturally. Okay, so thank you guys and hope you have a great night. 
all of you and hope to you guys will join our next online uh, course coaching. Okay, so yes, we will hear from our uh, closing remarks there. Okay, so thank you again, everyone. Have a good night and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.